Go. Hi, I'm Trisha from Me Smart Shakers. It is Sunday here in the Netherlands, and we are taking a bike ride from Kauda, where we're staying, which is up that way. And we're going to the Kinderdijk, which has all the windmills. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And uh, anyways, we're finding our way there. As you can see, we're in the beautiful countryside of Holland. Um, here we're the night horses. You can see the bike path paved that we have to bike on down here, even in the middle of the countryside. So join us on this uh this yeah we're, we're we're being adventurous because we don't know where we're going we're using google maps and uh we'll see how we get there it should be only about another hour and uh of biking so this is the uh, the resources that we have available as well so it's in a pannier on the back of patricia's bike and mine is decked out with the camera and Google Maps and uh, we're, we're getting along okay. Yeah, the weather is, there are some rain clouds again, but the weather said it wasn't going to rain, but it is kind of very windy and uh, yeah, who knows, we might get drenched again today. So let's see and uh, come along for the ride. So we're still on the uh, same path that we were before, um, but I just wanted to show you uh, the way that the uh, cows are moved around from pasture to pasture. So they actually make use of the, uh, the bike path. You can see by the uh, amount of cow manure that's left on the bike path. And then uh, they have little bridges so the cows can actually go from one section to the other. <coughs> Um, as they uh, eat the grass in one particular field and then need to move on to another one. Um, it's just absolutely gorgeous, over beautiful there. over here. Uh, we've seen swans and all kinds of ducks, uh, etc. I'm going to see if I can show you. So here's a little bridge that they use for moving. Uh, cows have been in here before. Uh, you'll see that all of the fields are essentially small little strips in between all of the the uh, canals, the small little canals. And the canals, of course, are used for irrigation purposes as well as uh, as fences. So there's no fencing other than uh, a little bit, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of string uh, down there and they put that across so the cows uh, don't get across. In some places in Holland you'll actually see that uh, cows are moved on, uh, on boats. So they actually go and stand quietly on a boat and are moved from one section to another. Um, here you see an entire flock of sheep that are on a couple of sections of uh, uh, of pasture as well.
lots of people, a tourist destination. Sorry about the wind, there's nothing I can do about it. We'll uh, probably remove as much of it as we can. This is Kinderdijk. So Kinderdijk essentially has, I don't know, 15 to 19, I can't remember what the actual number is, uh, working windmills. And so you can see quite a number of them. You'll be able to actually take a quick look, close look, at the ones that are right off of this uh, bike path. There's a walking path over there. And uh, some of the windmills are actually working. Originally, uh, the purpose of these windmills was to actually maintain uh, the water levels so that you'll see the water level of the canals off to the side uh, is much lower than the water level of this larger canal that's here in the center. And so what they're actually doing is pumping water, some of them, pumping water from these smaller canals off to the side, putting it into the larger canal, and keeping the, uh, the water levels different uh, as a way of controlling uh, how much water was in, in the area. Uh, these days there's very large water works um, in the Rotterdam area, right on the North Sea, and uh, most of that uh, function of making sure that the water inside the Netherlands is at a lower level than the water outside is taken care of automatically by large pumps, etc. So the windmills are, uh, even though these windmills have still work, the uh, function of them has been overtaken by more modern kinds of uh, uh, technologies, etc. Uh, but they certainly did the job. Kind of interesting to see the way that this is done. So that will be good. Had a, um, a date of 1740. So in seven years, it's going to be 300 years old. Seven years? How do you get that? <clears throat> 23. Oh, 40, yeah, sorry. Seven, 17 years. 17 years. It's, it'll be 300 years old. That was uh, uh, new math, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, most, many of these... Uh, yeah, this is, this is again, 1740. Yep. Many, many of these uh, windmills are now owned as individual houses. For instance, that one looks like yeah. it's uh, just a house um, that's, owned, that's uh, lived in by a family, a couple or something along those lines. It's surprising how little room there actually is. Um, there's essentially one large room on the first floor, uh, a smaller room on the second floor, and if there is a third floor, it'll be quite a small room. But uh, that's all you get, and then part of that room will be taken up by a ladder or something. sense of kind of history and uh, ah, sort of nostalgia uh, in this area with the windmills. By the way, there are hundreds of windmills, um, most of them not working, but some are working, uh, scattered throughout uh, the Netherlands and some in, uh, in Belgium and the rest of the the, uh, the lowlands. Uh, Belgium 
and parts of uh, northern France uh, as well as Holland itself or in Netherlands um, is uh, it was all considered part of uh, the lowlands uh, or the Netherlands in past centuries uh, and then have been consolidated into a number of smaller uh, nations. So you see that One of the things that we haven't dealt with is this whole idea of what is Holland, um, and uh, it's it's dealt with in in quite a number of places, websites, etc. But essentially, uh, Holland, North North Holland, or North Holland, and South Holland are two provinces within the nation of the Netherlands. Um, so there is no real nation called Holland and it's a misnomer to actually use that kind of terminology even though uh, right now we're in South Holland yeah <laughs> Dutch Dutch people typically talk about uh, while well, the language is uh, known as Hollands uh, or Dutch but we, we talk about it in terms of Hollands itself uh, um, so that's Hollandish if you want to have an English translation um, the, uh, the, the nation itself, though, is uh, Nederland and is made up of a number of... Thirteen provinces. Thirteen provinces? Yep. Okay. Uh, the northernmost is Groningen, I think, and the yep. three zones is next to it. And you've got North and South Holland, uh, Brabant. Um, well, it goes all the way down to the point um, in Belgium where Maastricht is. Yeah, so that's on, Limburg, on the I east think. side. I think that's Limburg is the so it, southernmost. It, and and that's where <coughs> Holland actually touches France as well. Um, so it, it uh, has uh, Belgium, France, Germany, uh, all, all uh, bordering onto the actual... Uh, but doesn't it have another one too? Because um, it has the... Um, Liechtenstein? Yeah. Cause I, it don't, has I don't know that that actually borders it. Could be. Well, they have those three countries, they always have them together, like for train purposes. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'd have to look at them. They're small, Belgium, I think, Lechtenstein and Netherlands, Netherlands together. Yeah. Um, it, it, <coughs> as one train zone, yeah. I guess, kind of thing. It, it's yeah. absolutely amazing, though. We, we get into the Netherlands, and um, it, it's fascinating to see how much infrastructure that's available for uh, biking and walking um, biking in particular uh, but but uh, those are by far the uh, more yeah I don't know supported um, means of travel than almost all the rest of it and yeah, even I though mean th I think the bikes have the number one priority there's almost over, 13 million over, over 13 million pedestrians bikes. even yeah and then cars are the last um, <clears throat> pedestrians also as well like especially in the center of cities where they have the centrum they have everything blocked off and you you tend to have to or should walk your bike through those places as well too um, so there where the pedestrian is is uh, um, given priority over the bikes but uh, I think in traveling I mean, you can travel anywhere, and there's bike paths, yep. like along highways, and well, and we were showing you so some on. of that this morning, so, uh, yeah. right in the middle of um, the farm fields. Uh, bike paths are ubiquitous; they go between all these small little uh, towns or dorps, as they're uh, known as, um, in, in between all of the cow fields, the sheep fields, the hay fields. Uh, we traveled through all of that this morning, and uh, then they're also uh, ubiquitous in inside the cities uh, as well. Um, most of the time, they are separated, so you'll actually find uh, bike paths um, separated from uh, the um, places where the cars go. Um, but they inside smaller uh, streets, etc. You'll actually find them incorporated directly into. But they're always designated in some way. Um, so in, in this particular instance, uh, they're they're bike, they're black, um, 
asphalt of some kind or other. Um, in most towns, you'll actually find them designated as red asphalt. So they've got a red color to them so that you can tell that they're uh, a bike path. Bike path. Um, but I they're think we everywhere. Probably keep going. There's a there's a great big storm cloud there, and I'm afraid we might get rained out. But anyway, it's hard to no, it's tell. Kinda, you would think but it'd go, be going this way. Let's go because there, the wind's and then let's go way, over that bridge that was there, kind of thing, and see. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we might be able to take that out rather than going past the thing yeah. again. Okay. So this is an interesting uh, point. So you can see there's constructions, a couple of uh, cranes in the background. Uh, there's a large warehouse off to the uh, right hand side. And then you see these uh, uh, molen windmills uh, that are still in, in use. Um, interesting juxtaposition with the new. Uh, by the way, I don't think you can see it from here, but earlier on I was looking off in the distance and you can see a lot of the uh, uh, skyscrapers from Rotterdam itself, so they're a little bit further to the south. And uh, uh, there's very much uh, uh, a new sort of sense in, in Rotterdam. Rotterdam itself, the city, was basically rebuilt after the Second World War because it had been bombed extensively because the Germans had uh, um, put a lot of infrastructure, etc. into, into the Yeah, we can. On Tuesday, yeah. we're going to go there on Tuesday. Um, I, I just also wanted to note that uh, most of the windmills here are of the same construction, so you see the sort of uh, beehive dome kind of shape. Um, and this one behind us is a very different kind of construction. So this one has uh, essentially a base to it and then a wooden box that sit on top. Um, no I don't know barn. exactly what the uh, significance is there, but, uh, but I think that's an older um, <laughs> an older construction type, the design. As you can tell, it's uh, taking advantage of the, the, uh, the wind that's here. Um, so it's a able to actually generate a fair amount of, uh, of speed as it's going around. Those are large, large veins and uh, you, you don't want to get involved with those. Um, moving the horses from one field to another. <coughs> or letting them loose, I think. farm. This is probably right alongside the windmills here on the right hand side. So uh, we've cut across Kinderdijk, so we're going towards the other shore. But canals everywhere along here. This is a UNESCO heritage, a world heritage site, um, so it will be preserved as long as possibly can. This is the first time we've been here at Kinderdijk in all the years that we've been coming, which is probably, this is probably our fourth or fifth time. And uh, it hasn't been pouring rain while we are here, which is uh, very nice. So on the uh, 
ferry to cross the end so you can see exactly where we're going. Uh, these ferries are ubiquitous going across canals, uh, rivers, and typically across rivers, but uh, you can find them everywhere else. And the costs are uh, rather nominal. I think this one costs uh, a euro uh, to get across. Uh, some of them, if they're longer, they'll be a little bit more expensive, but uh, oh, that's a euro if you're on a bike or if you're walking. Um, cards it'll be much more expensive than that. <clears throat> but they're very common. Um, we took one coming across uh, to the Pentec and now we're going back. Just to give you an idea of how out in the wild we are, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a heron, it's a lesser I think, that's sitting right on the edge of the water there. So the second one that we've come across. <clears throat> and the rest, to give you some context, it seems that we're just on the outside of something, I can't remember exactly the name of the little town, but very, very picturesque, and very much out in the middle of nowhere, um, and yet we've got very, very well-defined bike paths. An example of what a uh, traffic circle is like most most of the time to accommodate both uh, automobile traffic as well as uh, bicycles you end up with this kind of arrangement where there's a separate pathway for bikes and a separate pathway for the cars this one's not this one's not particularly well structured that way uh, I think we have to go across that way, Trish. Okay, this one doesn't go around the cir traffic circle for the bikes, um, but you'll see how this In is In 50 happening. meters at the roundabout, take the second exit. So down in the road, you'll actually see these triangles, which means that uh, bicycles have to be in the vehicles. Vehicles have the right of way here. Uh, in other instances, you'll actually see squares for the cars, and that means that they actually have to give right of way to the bicycles. So we go to the center. And we hip, hip, hip. 500 meters, yep. slide right. Oh. I didn't do that right. <laughs> okay, and now we're back on the bicycle path again. And coming into Kauda. So, I'm just talking on the recording. So here you can see that we're leaving the fields behind and getting into more urban areas. A little dips of doodling to do to get across the river. So I'll let you bring us home. Right to stay on LF2 Steden route, then slide left to stay on LF2 Steden route. Around the traffic circle and stay on this road. We need to go across the river. Yep. Slide left to stay on LF2 Steden route, then turn left to stay on LF2 Steden route. Turn left to stay on LF2 Steden route.
ISO. Turn left onto Gojan Verwelidik LF2 Link. Get that. What? Where'd you get? You were the light. I couldn't see it at In all. Five hundred meters. Turn right onto LF two Steden Road, Most Haven. Going straight. Making things up again according to this. What? I'm making things up again as according to this, but there are no open. Slight right on toboggan, then continue on to raw. Then your destination will be on the right. Yeah. Look at that, Roland. You got us there and back. Miracles do occur. What? Miracles do occur. <laughs> 